All right, so today Adobe dropped a brand new release of Lightroom, uh, Lightroom Classic 9.3. So right now I'm gonna show you all the new features that are in there. Hey Cafe crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. And in this video, we're gonna look at the new features inside of the June 2020 release of Lightroom Classic, and that is Lightroom version 9.3. So let's have a look at what's new. So the first thing that you're gonna notice is scrolling is much faster and much smoother. So they've definitely updated a lot of the uh, performance of that. Another thing is if we go into the develop module here, in the develop module, watch up in the corner here as we make the adjustment, notice that nothing changes there and it doesn't change in the film strip either until I release, then it updates in both the film strip and up there. And what that does is it just gives us a little bit faster performance because it's allowing this performance to be focused on here until you release it and then it updates. So it gives you that real time preview much faster. Uh, we've got another thing up here. We see there's an icon and this is our cloud sync. So now we've got the status. If we click on it, it shows us how much cloud storage we've got. We can sync, we can control all our sync settings from right here, go into preferences. And this icon will update for when we're syncing and it will show us what's going on. All right, another new option, if we go into the develop module here, um, we've always had these localized adjustment tools, but they haven't given us the ability to change color. So we're gonna click on here right now. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to Go down here, I'm going to turn on auto mask and I'm just going to select this area on there. In fact, why don't I just turn on the overlay so we can see what's going on. And okay, that's a bit rough, but that's all right. This will give you the general idea. I'm just hitting the alt or option key to go over here and just kind of clean that up a little bit. So we've always had the ability to, you know, change exposure and different things like that. But now we can go in here, this hue slide is there, and if we move it around, look at this, now we can change these colors inside that area. And if we wanna get very precise, hold down the Alt or the Option key, and Fine Adjustment will come on, and we can just move very, very slowly. That's great for skin tones and different things like that. Or you can, of course, just turn that on or off. So we could paint over different areas now and start to just change that hue or the color very quickly and very easy using this new slider. And this is also available under the radial and also under the gradient. All right, if we go under the curves, we can see we've got a new interface now and it's much easier to click between the point curve and the parametric curves. And we can also just go into the different colors here and we can see in the different color channels, much easier to get in there and see what's going on. We've got a little bit of that color hinting, which shows green, magenta, shows the colors in those channels. So that's kind of nice. And another UI update is HSL color. HSL looks the same, but when you click on color, we get these new icons right here. So it's just kind of nice little update there. Let's go under our preferences and I'll show you this. This is kind of nice. So if we click on presets, by default, we get the Adobe default, which is the Adobe color, I believe, a profile that's applied whenever we bring in a photo. So whenever you bring that photo into Lightroom, you get that profile that just goes on by default. You can't really change it. But now we can, if we turn on override master settings, we can go under, pick all the different cameras that we've got here and we can choose under the cameras, do we want to use the Adobe default or do we want to use the camera settings? So, you know, the camera settings such as camera faithful, all those different kind of things, you know, portrait, landscape. So we can choose the camera settings if we want, create default. And now when I pull in the photos, whenever anything's on a Canon 5D Mark IV, it's going to use the camera settings instead of the master settings. So we can override it. Now we can do more than one camera. So if we decide to go down here and maybe take my a7 III, I could go in there and maybe I want to just do everything in black and white from there and create default. So now when I bring something in from the Sony a7 III, it's going to take that on. Now any camera that's not listed in here is just going to use the default, whatever we set that to. 
Now, if we want, we could choose camera settings. So the default now or the master is going to be whatever settings are on that camera. So you have the option of doing that. These are the raw presets, by the way, or the raw defaults. So that's kind of really nice. Now, one of the things you might notice is we've got this new icon here, and it's also at the bottom there. So that's a Lightroom Classic is what that stands for uh, versus the other version, which is Lightroom. All right, let's look at another feature, which I think is really huge. And this is ISO adaptive presets. So if we take this photo, for example, and I can see this was shot at ISO 12,800. This photo here was shot at ISO 800. Let's find another one, maybe ISO 100. I'm sure we've got one right here. There we go. This one here is ISO 100. So watch what happens here. I'm going to create a preset. So I'm going to select this photo and I'm going to hold the control key and click that photo. So I've got both photos selected and let's create a preset really quick. So we're going to go under the develop. And what we're going to do here is we're just, let's do a quick split toning effect just so we can see that something is happening on the photo. So let's set our highlights. In fact, why don't we just click on here, set our highlights to a kind of a yellowy color, give it maybe a tealish into the shadows. Great. All right. So now we can, you know, clearly see that something is different. Now, what we're going to do is I want to sync the preset, but why don't I just finish this preset first? So I'm going to set in here noise reduction. I'm going to set luminosity noise reduction quite high because, you know, this is a really high ISO image. In fact, let's go a little higher than I normally would just so we can see. So we're at about 49. Why don't we make it 50 just so we can see. All right. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sync that to the other photo. So I'm just going to click on sync and then choose synchronize. All right, so let's go to the other photo and notice they're both still selected and we can see there's the color. We know the color effects on there, but this noise reduction is way too much for an ISO 100. So why don't we take that noise reduction all the way down to zero and we're going to turn the sharpening up to about 66. Great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a preset. So let's just click on the preset and we're going to create a preset. And we're going to call it, I don't know, blue. And we're going to click create. But before we do create ISO adaptive preset, let's turn that on. Now, in order for this to work, you have to have two photographs or more selected of different ISOs. It won't work if both these photos have the same ISO setting. And then we're going to click create. I'm going to go to develop and I'm just going to choose reset. And I'm going to grab that one and I'm going to choose reset. Okay, so we've reset both of these photos and if we look at it here, we can see, you know, let's go down so we can see the sharpening and there's the noise reduction just at the default value. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under user presets and I'm going to click on blue to apply that preset. So notice this picture here, there's the car. And if we look at it, there's our 50 noise reduction and normal sharpening. Let's go to this other photo. We know this one's at ISO 100. So let's apply the preset. Boom, there it is. Look at that, noise reduction is still at zero and the sharpening now is increased to that 66. So what happens if I apply this onto a different photo that has 800 ISO? So if we look up here, we can see that's ISO 800. Let's apply the preset and see what happens. All right, so if we look at this, notice that we've got 25 now instead of the color. So we've got a little bit of color. So it's in between the two photos and same thing with sharpening. So effectively how this works. So that's really exciting. So even though I created that ISO with 112,000, those were the two settings, any ISO is going to adapt and proportionally apply those adjustments. So that's super cool. I think it's one of the most exciting things inside of this new version of Lightroom. I actually want to announce that my comprehensive Lightroom course, Lightroom Classic for Digital Photographers, is completely updated for this latest version of Lightroom. So if you want to learn it, that's definitely your best resource. 
This is, I believe, the most comprehensive Lightroom training that there is, especially for Lightroom Classic. And it covers everything. There's like 140 lessons and over 12 hours of training. Um, so check out the link underneath for that, uh, where you can go get that from Photoshop Cafe if you really want to get into Lightroom and learn everything. Uh, Lightroom Classic, that is. So anyway, guys, so what do you think about this new version? I'd love to know. Drop a comment underneath and tell me what is your favorite new feature and are you excited about it? Also want to mention that Camera Raw has got a lot of new updates, these new features, and also a new user interface. So check out my other video on the new features of Photoshop and that covers ACR and all those new things. Kind of fun and exciting. Hey, and if you're new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on all the notifications, and then you'll know when I upload a new video, um, which right now I'm doing three times a week. Every Tuesday I'm dropping a video. Every Saturday or Sunday I'm dropping a fundamental beginner's video, and then we're doing live streams on Thursdays. So I'd love to have you as part of the family. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.